Hello, and welcome to Tuesday's Tales. Today our story is Madeline in London by Ludwig Belmonts. Let's get started. Here we go. This looks like it's going to be a fun book. Oh, it looks like they're already having fun. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. They left the house at half past nine. The smallest one was Madeline. In an old house that stood next door lived Pepito, the son of the Spanish ambassador. An ambassador doesn't have to pay rent, but he has to move to wherever he's sent. He took his family and his hat they left for England, all but the cat. I'm glad, said the cat. There goes that bad hat. Let him annoy some other kitten at the embassy in Great Britain. The little girls all cried, Boo-hoo! We'd like to go to London, too. Oh, they miss their friend. In London, Pepito just picked at his dinner, and he grew thin, and then he grew thinner. And when he began to look like a stick, his mamma said, My, this boy looks sick. I think Pepito is lonely for Madeline and the little girls next door. Poor baby. He doesn't look too hot. <laughs> His papa called Paris. Hello, Miss Clavel. My little Pepito is not at all well. He misses you, and he's lonesome for Madeline and the little girls next door. May we request the pleasure of your company? There's plenty of room here at our embassy. Quick, darlings, pack your bags, and we'll get out to the airport and catch the next jet. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of joy. <gasps> Fill the house with lovely flowers, fly our flags from all the towers. For Pepito's birthday bake, the most wonderful, wonderful birthday cake. Place twelve beds in true straight lines, the last one here will be Madeline's. Welcome to London, the weather's fine, and this exactly half past nine. Good heavens, said Miss Clavel, we've brought no toy for His Excellency's little boy, said Madeline. Everybody knows, of course, he's always said he craved a horse. In their little purses and in Miss Clavel's bag, there wasn't enough money to buy the meanest nag. Hmm. But in London, there's a place to get a retired horse to keep as a pet. And when they went to the place they found, a horse that was gentle, strong, and sound. Some poor old Dobbins are made into blue, but not this one. Look, he's as good as new. Happy birthday, Pepito. Happy birthday to you. This lovely horse belongs to you. Oh boy. They just popped him right up there. Just then, 
Tara, tara, a trumpet blew. Suddenly outside, and off he flew, over the wall to take his place at the head of the queen's lifeguards, which he had always led, before the Royal Society for the Protection of Horses had retired him from his, Her Majesty's forces. Aw, so he's used to hearing the trumpets call him. Uh-oh. <laughs> Madeline and Pepito are about to go on a trip. <gasps> oh dear, they've gone. Oh, what a pity. Come, children. We'll find them in the city. Careful, girls. Watch your feet. Look right before you cross the street. Oh, for a cup of tea and crumpets. Oh, hark, hark, there goes the sound of trumpets. The little girl is leading the way. She knows where they're going. These birds have seen this all before. Is that Madeline and Pepito? It is. But they are glad of an encore. And so are the people on ship and shore. And now it's getting really grand. Here comes the mascot and his band. Yay! The people below are stout and loyal. And those on the balcony mostly royal. The show is over. It's getting dark. In the city, in the park. Dinner is waiting. We must be on time. Now let us find Pepito and Madeline. Well, isn't it lovely? They're standing sentry. White here, right here at the White Hall entry. That is the power and the beauty. In England, everyone does his duty. I'm loving Pepito's hat. It's a great hat. Visiting is fun and gay. Let's celebrate a lovely day. Everyone has been well fed. Everyone was in his bed. Only one was forgotten. He'd been on his feet all day long without anything to eat. In an outrage, that in a cottage that was thatched, wearing trousers that were patched, lived the gardener who loved flowers, especially in the morning hours, when their faces fresh with dew, smiled at him and said, How do you do? The gardener must love his job. Oh, uh oh, but look what the horse is doing. Oh no. He's back. He, oh, oh no. The gardener, who was never late, opened up the garden gate. The gardener dropped his garden hose. There wasn't a daisy or a rose. All my work and all my care for naught. Oh, this is hard to bear. Where's my celery, carrots, tomatoes, my beans and peas, and not an apple on my apple trees? Everybody had to cry, not a single eye was dry. Oh look, 
who is lying there with his feet up in the air. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. This is getting intense. I feel his breath. He's not dead yet. Quick, Pepito, get the vet. Oh my gosh. This is terrible. The vet said, don't worry, he's only asleep. I didn't know his horses slept like that. Help me get him on his feet. Oh, dear. <laughs> As a diet, there's nothing worse than green apples and roses for an old horse. Dear lady, said Miss Clavel, we beg your pardon. It seems our horse has eaten up your garden. Oh, dear. A little sunshine, a little rain, and it will all be the same again. Pepito's mother said, Quite so, quite so. Still I'm afraid. The horse must go. Aw, oh, man. That's sad. Then Madeline cried, I know what to do. Pepito, let's take care of him for you. Aw. Man, Madeline wants that horse. That's so sweet. Fasten your seat belts. In half an hour, you will see the Eiffel Tower. Madeline, Madeline, where have you been? We've been to London to see the Queen. At last, sighed Madeline, we are able to sit down without being thirteen at table. They brushed their teeth and gave him bread and covered him up and put him to bed. Oh. Good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now go to sleep said Miss Clavel, and she turned out the light and closed the door. There were twelve upstairs, and below one more. The end. Oh, that was fun. That was a great book. All right, our Bible story for tonight is called Washed with Tears. In the grown-up Bible, you can find that in Luke chapter 7, and also Mark 14 and John 12. One night, Jesus went to dinner at an important leader's house. The important leader invited his important friends. They were all just sitting down to eat when a woman walked in. She was not invited, but everyone knew who she was. Who does she think she is? The guest whispered. How dare she? The woman was a big sinner, and everyone knew it. It was easy to see. After all, she had broken the rules and done bad things. The woman walked straight up to Jesus. She was carrying very expensive perfume. Now the thing about perfume back then was that it didn't come in bottles came in jars. And the jars were made out of precious stone, like alabaster. But here's the catch. The jar didn't have a lid or a stopper or anything, so the only way you got the perfume out was if you broke the jar. Once you broke the jar, that was it. You had no more. Most people didn't use perfume because it was too precious. They just kept it on a shelf and looked at it. I didn't know that. That's cool. So you see, this perfume was her most precious thing in all the world. It was her treasure. The woman knelt down before Jesus like he was a king. She held Jesus' feet in her hands and started to cry. Her tears fell onto Jesus' feet, washing them. She kissed his feet and dried them with her long, dark hair. And then she did something strange. She broke the jar and poured the perfume all over his feet. Everyone gasped. 
<gasps> what a waste over someone's feet? Such expensive perfume. It smelled like lilies in a summer field. Jesus looked at the woman and he smiled at her. What she had done was the most wonderful thing. Just as Samuel had anointed David, God's true king, all those years before, so this woman had anointed Jesus, not with oil, but with her tears. The important people were cross. They thought Jesus should not be kind to this woman. That woman is a sinner, they grumbled. We're the good ones. And it's true, they did look good from the outside. After all, they were keeping all the rules. But Jesus could see inside people, and inside in their hearts, Jesus saw that they did not love God or other people. They were running away from God, and they thought they didn't need a rescuer. They thought that they were good enough because they kept the rules, but sin had stopped their hearts from working properly, and their hearts were hard and cold. This woman knows she's a sinner, Jesus told them. She knows she'll never be good enough. She knows she needs me to rescue her. That's why she loves me so much. You look down on this woman because you don't look up to God. She is sinful on the outside, but you are sinful on the inside. The important people shook with anger. Jesus turned to the woman and smiled. Your sins are forgiven, he said. You trusted me, and God has rescued you. Who does Jesus think he is? The important people whispered. Only God can forgive sins. They didn't believe Jesus was God's son. The more Jesus loved people and helped them, the more the important people and leaders hated him. They were afraid people would follow Jesus instead of them. They were jealous and angry, angry enough to kill Jesus. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you for joining us tonight. And if you get on Facebook Live or wait till video gets posted next week, you'll know what our story is. It could be any story. Oh my goodness. So we'll see you next week. Bye.